Good morning, everyone. Today, we welcome three young people who will be receiving Jesus for the first time in the Eucharist. Before we begin Mass, I would like to acknowledge several safety guidelines. Hand sanitizer stations are available at all the entrances of the church. For your safety and the safety of others around you, we strongly encourage you to wear a mask while you are here for Mass. We have placed collection baskets near the ambo and altar for you to drop your collection in, as we will not be taking up the collection during Mass. During Communion, please remain seated until a Communion distributor comes to your section. When you come up for Communion, please maintain a social distance of six feet between families. The communion ministers will be wearing a mask while distributing communion. And finally, after mass, we ask that you not congregate in the pews or gathering spaces so that we can thoroughly sanitize the church. Thank you. Please rise and join in singing our opening song, Gather Your People. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. Good morning, Monsignor. Coming together once again as our Lord's family, let us prepare our hearts to celebrate these mysteries of our faith. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He will be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be the place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of ri the riches and wisdom and the knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and in him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, and, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The inscription around the inside of the dome of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome reads its entirety in Latin this way. Tu es Petrus et super hunc Petram, edificabo ecclesia meum, et tibi dabo clavis reini cerorum. Translated into English, our gospel today from Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and I will give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. This inscription is over the Baldacchino, 
which is over the altar, which is over the grave of St. Peter. This inscription, built over St. Peter, reminds us that Jesus Christ built his church on St. Peter, our first pope. And it all happened during a conversation that looked as normal as that conversation right there. But that ordinary conversation became extraordinary. It became extraordinary when Peter said to our Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, you are rock, and upon you I will build my church. It was through St. Peter's love of him and through St. Peter's recognition of who he really is that Jesus established our church. That dome of St. Peter is magnificent. The letters of the text I just read you are two meters tall, over six and a half feet. The dome rises almost 400 feet above the floor. Michelangelo began that project when he was 71 years old, and it was completed 24 years after he died, the dome of our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. is modeled after it. It is magnificent because it is magnificent that our Catholic Church is founded on faith in Jesus as the Son of the living God. It is magnificent because Jesus Christ is magnificent. Our Pope today, the 266th Pope, Pope Francis, he commented recently on this text, and he said, recognizing Jesus as the living God is the secret to a happy life. I love Pope Francis when he talks. He speaks so simply, profoundly. Recognizing Jesus as the living God is the secret to a happy life. Today, we're talking about the beginning of our church. But there will come a day where the church will end. There will come a day when there is no longer a need for the church. That is when heaven and earth will be united in the end with Christ as head, as Saint Peter wrote. But today, now, we need the church. Jesus Christ established the church for us, and we need it. We need it because we are sinners and we cannot save ourselves, no matter how hard we try. We are sinners and we cannot save ourselves, and so we need a Savior who comes to us through the church. We need the church because it is the pillar of truth, as we read in 1 Timothy. We need the church because the church connects us to the life of Christ through the sacraments. In the church, the gathering of those who believe. That's what the word church means. Church comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which means gathering, assembly, congregation. You could say that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my gathering. I will build my assembly. 
of those who recognize me as the living God. All the new priests who have transferred this summer are going to parishes where we cannot all gather for good reason. I am called a pastor, which means shepherd. I'm the shepherd of a gathering that is here and there as they watch online. I, I received a lot of phone calls when, I, when it was announced that I'm coming here, and I received a lot of notes. I made a lot of phone calls, too, and wrote a lot of notes. One gentleman called me, he's watching now, and he said, Monsignor, I'm just going to tell you this. At Corpus Christi, we pray well and we sing well. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's a good reputation to have. You worship well. That's a great reputation to have. I I've heard accounts of your worship when you're full, upstairs and downstairs. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that one day. But while we're apart, we can all really be together today in today's gospel spirit. Let's all be together as we remember, renew, and review. Let's all be united wherever we are to remember that the church is a great gift. It's a great gift we have. Let's renew our love for it. Jesus loved us and gave it to us. Let's renew the love we have for the church. And let's review in these different times, let's review our participation in it, our full and active participation in it. If you're doing it well, continue to do it. If you're not doing it so well, this weekend, let's, let's stir those, those embers back into flame, back into that flame of faith you all have. How do we worship here or online? How do we support the work of this parish in your giving and tithing? How do you pray for one another? How do you say the good things people need to hear? Let's all, no matter where we are, continue to do that until we are all gathered again. Amen. Let's stand and profess what we believe. I believe in one God. Maker of heaven and earth, of all things. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. True light, true God from true God, begotten not me. Came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in his grave and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead.
Let us bring our prayers now before God the Father. For Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred space by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our prayer basket and for all those who have asked for our prayers, Ethel Martin, Vernon Kuntz, Father Paul Becker, and Deacon Rex McDowell, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. our prayer. For the eternal joy and peace of Francis Slosher, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the prayers of the people whom you've gathered and grant their prayers as you give us every good thing according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with your goodness we receive this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. I welcome our visitors and guests to Corpus Christi that are here today. I hope you all have a good day, hot August summer day. Enjoy your last week of August already, and we'll see you again. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass has ended. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Please join in singing our closing song, We Are the Light of the World.